For sure, for sure. Be, 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 be. So cool. All right, family. For all of you that don't know me, my name is Lee Tate. I'm a Platinum 1000 in this business. Uh, I've been doing this for the last year now. Been doing HFX for about the last, since last September, October, I want to say. Yeah, so I've been, I've seen every level of cash wrap. I've seen cash wrap from the basics to cash wrap 2.0. So now where we are with cash wrap 3.0, right? And I just want to let you know Cash Trap 3.0 is changing again. I had somebody that came into the business, literally their first day trading with 3.0. Let's make sure we're muting our mics, fam. First day trading with 3.0, they were able to go 18 and 3 by themselves. No educator, not me involved. They're just using the system, plugging in, taking the point system, taking their trades, right? So it's literally that simple. And we're just going to go into the ways you can maximize it, right? Ways you can get the most efficiency, get those best records out of it. So, boom. Let's just make sure everybody muted. Make sure everybody muted. Boom. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Right. So let's go through with the PowerPoint, right? If I can go to the next slide. So boom, we all know. Go to Hourglass to get to your cash trap. All right, so one of the things you want to always make sure of, these are your rules. If price is trending in a certain direction, you want to know your uptrends, your downtrends, or, or better known as ranging market, right? Okay. Hold on, let me change this. I'm just going to make it where y'all can hear me. Just, uh... All right, so Okay, bit, 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 bit. Okay, cool, right? So if price is trending, we want to be looking for up, uh, up arrows during the uptrend and their support levels. We want to be looking for down arrows during the downtrend and their resistance levels, right? So we have our supports on the bottom. Remember, supports hold us up. Resistance above us keeps us from going higher, right? So if price is consolidating, we want to look for uptrends. At, um, I mean, we want to look for up arrows and supports, down arrows and resistance. Very simple. In this presentation, we'll go over an uh, example of uptrend, downtrend, and a consolidated market, a.k.a. range and market. So, right, boom. So, in the uptrend, you're going to see it's going to go up, it's going to pull back, and this is going to be called your lower high. It's not going to go lower than this last area, right? It's going to continue to give you a, up, a higher high now, continue to pass this higher high, and then create another lower high. That's going to show you this uptrending market, right? Consolidation is going to go up, give you this area of resistance, come back down to this area of support, and reject, come back up to this area of resistance, and not give you a higher high, nor give you a lower low. Come back down, hit the same area of support, reject again, hit the same area of resistance, right? That's a consolidated market. So in these markets, we'll be looking for up arrows down here and down arrows up here, right? On the uptrend, we'll be looking for up arrows every single time we can get one of these pullbacks, right? Downtrend, exact same thing as the uptrend, except the opposite way, right? So when we look for sales, when we get these pullbacks, what we're seeing is not giving us a higher high, but starting to continue in that downtrend. We look for a sale here, sale here, continue in that downtrend, right? So boom. For example, uh, in an uptrend, your resistance is going to be the area where price uh, rejects it, begins to come down, and then it's going to reject again, but not giving you uh, going past this area where it began at. So you're creating a lower high, creating an area of support. That's why I was saying we would like to buy it, continuing up in that uptrend. We finally see price rejects again, creates a resistance. Once it pulled back, create that, le that level of support where the previous resistance was. That's a perfect sign of an entry for an up arrow right there, right? So every time you see your supports um, becoming where a previous resistance was, that's beautiful market structure. Same thing for a downtrend. So we're looking, we see price going downward. Okay, finally find the area of support. We're gonna wait. Okay, we've got an area of resistance. We're looking for down arrows. We're taking every down arrow on the way down, right? So then we take that down arrow, oh, boom, finally find a le another le level of support. We wait until it comes back up, finally show us an area of resistance where our previous support was. Boom, back taking our down arrows. And it's literally that simple, family. So an example of a real market, this is how a real market would be looking right now, right? So this will be an uptrend right here, located right here. As we can see, price was going up. It created a lower low like we was, I mean a lower high like we were saying, then come back to this previous area, went back up. 
create a lower high where this previous area of support was. I mean, previous areas was resistance, now became a support, boom, went back up. Finally kept going, kept going, found the area of support, I mean, resistance right there, pulled all the way back, boom, get in again. And that's why you see good market structure for uptrend, right? So then if you see price saying above these middle lines um, right here, these, these are the middle lines. See price saying above these middle lines is now black on cash drop 3.0. You'll be looking for that to be an uptrend. That'll be your indication to see, okay, market structure is showing me it's trading in an uptrend, right? Also, if you see it trading above this 200 moving average, that's showing you it's trading in an uptrend. So boom, right here we see an area of consolidation, right? So market was coming here, it rejected, came here, supported, pre multiple times boom rejected right here multiple times then come all the way back that time but it did come right here reject a little bit more and then just kind of really start consolidating right here so this is a um a prime example of consolidation what you'll see in the market so right around here i wouldn't even want to mess with any of this maybe back in here i would have called me a sell and called me a buy but after it started moving real slow and start this is probably one of the down periods in the market right so this might have been a new york session this might have been a london session and this might have just been that Tokyo Sydney session where the market started to move real slow, not really a lot going on, right? So boom, right here, we see a perfect indication of a downtrend. Price is trading below our middle lines, right? Then we have it trading against our green Bollinger bands. We're trading below our 200 EMA, and we're steadily seeing price go lower, not go back anywhere near the previous area, continue to go lower, come back a little bit, go lower, go lower, come back a little bit, go lower. So that's prime example of a downtrend, right? So anywhere in here, once you see price start to pull back and you see these blue candles, once you get a red arrow popping up, that's boom, take that. And if it's a three-point trade, I like to even take those because I'm going with market structure, I'm going with the trend. It's not a bad trade even if it's a three-point trade, right? So boom, as we can see at the end right there, it started to consolidate once again. We get this area, boom, rejects, come down, and um, give us this area of support where we already see right here. Goes back up, area resistance, area support. Broke it a little bit, but still rejected again. Came back down to the same area of support and just consolidated, right? So boom, that's, those are the only three market structures there are. These are the only things you're gonna see on your charts all day long. You're gonna see uptrends, downtrends, consolidation. All you have to do is understand what the market is doing during that time period that you trade. Is the market consolidating? Is the market in the uptrend? In the market in the uptrend, or is the market in the downtrend? That's all you need to be looking for every single time you're getting onto the charts, looking at your pair that you like to trade. Me personally, I like to stick to maybe two to three pairs, trade those pairs for about an hour. Honestly, I don't, I'm not on the charts for longer than an hour, but I give me two to three pairs, Euro USD, USD JPY, Euro JPY, Make your money just like that. You can already see, okay, this one in the uptrend, this one consolidation, this one in the downtrend, right? So once you see your, um, this side of the alert panel is gonna look on cash drive, right? It's gonna have the pair showing you your symbol. It's gonna tell you if it's a put on the tight. Mm, maybe it's gonna show you how it is. Yeah, it's gonna show you. Okay, boom. It's gonna tell you if it's a put or a call on every single currency pair, right? And then, it's gonna show your, um, it's gonna give you your uh, currency strength meter, right? So your currency strength meter is letting you know, basically it's kind of showing you the same thing as if it's in the uptrend or if it's in the downtrend. So once you're seeing a downtrend, you can match it up with your currency strength meter and say, okay, am I seeing that the CAD, the bottom one is bigger than the top, showing me that we're, that it is matching up with my downtrend that I'm seeing? Or am I seeing that we're in the uptrend, now I check my currency strength meter, Okay, the top is higher than, bigger than the bottom one. We are in the uptrend, matching up with my currency strength meter, right? So boom, next we, uh, we always wanna check our last three digits on the entry pair. That's how if we all know we've been on with educators. We all know that that's, that's how you call out our trades on HFX. We always go by the last three numbers, right? And um, from cash trap to the brokers, I always notice it's between probably like a, a three to six point difference between the numbers that's gonna be on a broker and the numbers that's showing up on cash trap, right? So for instance, right now it might say 317 on cash trap, but then on your broker it might say 325. So that doesn't necessarily mean that um, you don't wanna take that trade right there at 325. This is just letting you know it's a little bit off in the correlation with the numbers that you just have to pay attention to, right? So boom, we can go over this point system, but actually with 3.0, this is just something that 
you want to know for your extra confirmations because actually it's going to call out the points for you. So it's making it so much simpler, right? But if we're going through our points, we can all screenshot this. We can make sure this um, PowerPoint gets sent out to all our leaders in the group and they can get y'all this, right? But uh, the green arrow is going to be one point, right? Your currency strength meter being bigger than your first one. These are for, all for the code, all for calls, all for calls, right? So your um, green arrow is going to be one point. Your currency strength meter, uh, the first one being bigger than the second, is going to be another point. Your green um, Bollinger Band, price being against your green Bollinger Band, is going to be a point. Um, price being on one of, one of the green support lines is going to be a point. The B showing up on the stochastic, I'm going to go over all these. I'll show you examples of them. But the B showing up on the stochastic indicator is one point, And the cross up on the stochastics and the RSI is 1.2, right? And the same thing goes, um, so right, so a good trade is a three-point trade. That's what we like probably take a 1%, right? Better trade is going to be four-point trade. It's going to be your 2% 2 trades. Best trades, five points and up, 3%. Make sure you're making money because it's more than likely going the right way, right? So me personally, I like to take four and five point trades. I really, three every now and again, like I was saying, if it's going with the trend, I'm liking what I'm seeing, I'll take three point trades. But me personally, four and five point trades is the best way to get into the market, make those best executive sniper entries, get out, make your money in no time, right? So boom, we go over our sale. It's gonna be your red arrow. Your currency strength, only difference between um, the put and sale, your currency strength meter is the second one you want to be bigger on your sale, right? You're going to be looking for price to be against the red Bollinger Band when you look for a sale. You're going to see it against a red resistance line. You're going to see everything's red, basically, for the sales. <laughs> You're going to see an S stochastic pop-up on your um, stochastic pop-up. You're going to see um, the indicators on your stochastic and your RSI start to cross down to this red line that I'm going to show you in a minute, right? So, boom, like we were saying, one more time for a review. We like to make sure we're just seeing it. it's price trending, right? So if it's trending in the uptrend, taking up arrows at support levels. If it's in the downtrend, we're taking down um, arrows and resistance levels. Boom, if it's consolidating, we can take up or down arrows. We're just looking for those support and resistance levels. And it's literally that simple. And this is coming from two of uh, uh, our favorite educators that we all should know about, Matthew Thayer, Taylor Marks. They get on multiple times throughout the week that we all can get paid with them. They teach us exactly how to use it ourselves, how we can uh, make money in minutes, honestly. And uh, that's exactly how I learned how to use the more, um, cash trap, how I learned how to trade in this market. I tapped in every single day for a matter of months to Matthew Thayer. I uh, watched him grow his account from $3 million to $15 million now. So it's just coming in, getting that knowledge, getting that um, info, taking it to the next level, right? So what time is it? I'm just going to show you this short video, 922. I told you, I'm going to be out here in no time. So boom, just show you all this quick example of 3.0 in action because the market is um, actually closed right now, as we all know. So if I pull up Cash Trap, it's going to say no signals. But this is just an example of me taking a trade using Cash Trap 3.0, right? So boom, this was a five-point trade. We can pause it right here. This was a five-point trade. So boom, why was this a five-point trade? It hit this red resistance level. That's one point. Arrow, two points. It was on this red Bollinger Band, three points. And we're getting the cross down, cross down right here, four points, five points, right? Cross down on this red sto stochastic, cross down on this red RSI. And it's literally that simple, five-point trade. But I just know the five-point trade because I know all the indicators. You coming in brand new, you don't have to know any of that. You can literally get on here and wait and say, oh, a five-point put just came out and press sell and literally just look for five and five, four and five-point trades and make money all single day, right? So this is just an example of how that trade went. As you can see, I had already cleared two trades in the exact same area because I seen it was a level of resistance right there. As we can see, the market tapped it multiple times and rejected. And then, boom, we got that move that we were really looking for, that major move down, right? So boom, in a matter of six minutes, I just made uh, 30, 30, and like 15 or something. So what is it, $75 in six minutes, just off 3.0? <laughs> it's literally that simple, family. Uh, let me see, I think I got one more. So boom, it's another five-point trade. As we can see right here, though. Hold on, let me go back. This is a perfect example of a consolidated market. This was a downtrend right here. Finally ended that downtrend, found a level of support. He had this level of resistance, 
can literally, boom, take a sales every single time it comes near here, like I did right here. You can commit buying it every single time it came near here. Sooner or later, the market is going to break that and go into another uptrend or a downtrend. But while it's doing that, you take advantage of it, right? You could easily, during this right here, I could have easily went five and one just off of that's a sale, that's a buy, that's a sale, that's a buy. That or that was a sale. That's a buy. That's a buy. And then it's the sale I got. Like, so you see how easy it is just knowing market structure and taking advantage of what the market is giving you, right? So in these trades, I didn't roll over. I actually got into them. They went out of my direction for about 10 seconds. Checking them out, like, oh, do I want to roll over? No, it's a five-point trade. I literally rock out. I set that area of resistance. And literally, that simple, two minutes, money made, right? So $22 add-on. We can all take advantage of it starting Sunday night, 9 o'clock. Matthew Thayer is going to be on at 10 o'clock, right? He's going to be teaching it, going over everything that I just went over. He's going to be going over a lot more in depth, going telling you about market structure, um, the five-minute candles. Oh, yeah, let me I'll tell you about that before I go to. We do got a couple more minutes, all right? So... Mm, you always want to wait until the new candle comes out. That's just the main thing I wanted to say. I might not be able to show you. I can show you on the video. Right. So right here, it's a timer on this candle. Every single time it's going to let you know when a new five-minute candle is coming out. So um, during the candle, sometimes we'll see that the, the score will start to change. So you might see a score change to a five-point trade during the candle. It still might be three minutes left into the candle, though, right? So me personally, I don't take trades until the new candle unless I see that market is obviously at an area that I want to take a trade in, like an area of support like it was down here or area of resistance right here, right? So if it's not in one of those perfect areas that – I'm like, okay, it's probably like a minute left into this candle. Me personally, if I do want to get into a trade before the new candle happens and I see it's about, say, for instance, two minutes left in this trade, but I see it's at this area of resistance before this candle came out, I would have actually taken my trade during this um, time and took it for like five minutes, right? Instead of three minutes, I would have already been into the trade once the new candle came out, right? So that's just something a little bit more advanced for some of my people that understand you that's been using cash trap a little bit longer. You'll understand what I was saying by that. But um, Matthew Thayer for sure is going to be on tomorrow night at 10 o'clock. All of you all on here should have the HFX package should be able to tap in with him. Uh, make sure you're adding on cash trap tomorrow night for sure. He's going to go more in depth with it. I'm telling you 3.0 is crazy. It's $22. I just showed you I made $75 in six minutes. So, $22 is nothing in this space, right? So if you want to you want to really take advantage of your products, of, of what you're investing, you really want to take advantage of your money, you want to take advantage of your time, energy, and effort, save yourself that. That's what we do. It's a system, right? That's why they came out with Cash Trap 3.0. So that's all I'm here for. If anybody have any questions, you can unmute your mic right now. Um, but that's, that's mainly it. It's really that simple. Right. So I know it's a Saturday night. If none of y'all have any questions, I appreciate all 27 of y'all being tapped in with me for this 30 minutes, man. I love y'all family. We're going to make sure we all headed to the top because we all know the bottom is way too crowded, right? So I'm going to see y'all there. And this love. Make sure y'all add me on IG.